Hey everyone, this is Chris here and today is January 28th, 2023. I've got a really interesting video for you guys. Uh, we're going to be talking about in today's video the reason why Jim Courier started to decline after the 1993 tennis season. Um, before we get into this topic though, I'd like to encourage you guys, if you're new to this channel, to please take a minute to hit the subscribe button down below. That'll of course keep you notified of any time we release additional content like this. And if you enjoy videos like this, then please be sure to share this video with your friends. All right guys, without further ado, let's get into it. Another reason why I wanted to cover it today is because I just realized that it was 30 years ago this month that, or next month, that Jim Courier won his last Grand Slam title. That was at the 1993 Australian Open. Of course, you go back 30 years ago, nobody would have ever thought that Jim Courier would not win another Grand Slam final uh, after his incredible performance against Stefan Edberg. Um, Jim Courier had really been pretty dominant in the years uh, preceding that. He had of course won his first Grand Slam title at the 1991 French Open where he defeated uh, Andre Agassi in five sets. The following year he would win the Austrian Open for the first time and then he would follow that up by defending his title at the French Open in 1992 against Peter Korda and then he would win his fourth and final uh, Grand Slam title at the 1993 Austrian Open. 1993 is a really interesting year for Jim Courier because it was an extremely solid year for him in a lot of senses. He reached three Grand Slam finals that year at the Australian Open, the French Open, and Wimbledon. And he was able to win one of them, of course, the Australian being the one that he won. Now, one thing that's very interesting about this year is that we can start to see a decline in Courier's game. And I really feel that that decline started... I would say after Wimbledon. I think the genesis for this was just because of how dominant he had been throughout the previous two years. Um, two years might not seem like a long time to really be uh, a dominant player, but when you get to the top of the game, um, it's very, very difficult to sustain that because you have to give it 100% on the practice court. You have to keep looking for new ways to improve out there. And if you decline, even if it's just a little bit, it'll prevent you from being able to win those Grand Slam titles that previously you were able to win. And I, th I know this was a fact for Jim Courier was he just lost a little bit of his desire, I think, or maybe more than a little bit, but he really lost that for a period of time to go out there and put in the, um, the extra effort to win those titles. And tennis is a very fluid sport, you know. If you're off for a year or two, the odds are that you're not going to be able to come back from that and keep winning titles. Um, and I think that's what happened for Courier. And also, you combine that with Pete Sampras really emerging and becoming very, very dangerous on the hard courts again. Um, and Andre Agassi, for a, a short period of time, also becoming uh, a threat to win slams as well. Agassi wasn't so much of a problem, though, for Courier. It was really, I think, Pete Sampras... And also all those guys that could play well at the French Open. You had Bruguera, Mooster, Kafelnikov, a whole bunch of these guys. So it was just hard to break through because there was so much variety and so many great players that could win an event like that. And then for every other event, you've got Pete Sampras, who's a threat to win. And there just wasn't really an opening for a guy like Jim Courier to really get in there and win a Grand Slam title. I just, yeah, basically those are my thoughts. I think he got what he could out of his career, and I think he just kind of lost his passion. Uh, maybe after he lost a few of those Grand Slam finals, might have had something to do with it, but probably it was just those years of being a top player that really just kind of had a way of uh, um, causing him to lose a little bit of the fire that he had inside for winning those events. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Tell me, why do you think that Jim Courier lost his desire to be a top-level Grand Slam contender? Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you at the next one. I just